Hello and welcome to Patrick's Tech Lightning. Last night I went to bed and I slept like a baby who hasn't been sleeping for at least 10 days. I slept so well because I knew that today would be the day that I would tell you about the Microsoft Enterprise Scale Landing Zone or ESLZ as they would like to call it. So without wasting another second, let's dig into it. Here we go. The Microsoft Enterprise Scale Landing Zone, or the ESLZ, as the popular guys at the party would refer to it, is the baseline for architecturing in Azure. Before we dive into the deep waters and start fighting with the sharks, we will first define the general ideas. Our focus will be on these three concepts. The Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, CAF. The Microsoft CAF is a detailed guidance of practices tools and methodologies to implement businesses and technological strategies for enterprises moving to the Azure cloud. It guides you through the start of the journey with business drivers on how to successfully end up in Azure. Azure Landing Zone. You can think of an Azure Landing Zone as a bare bone infrastructure set up in order for you to put your workloads in the cloud. The Enterprise Scale Landing Zone from Microsoft, ESLZ. The Enterprise Scale Landing Zone is a set of best practices on how to architect your Azure Landing Zone. Since you are more than smart enough to architect a Landing Zone all by yourself, you may ask yourself, why is this so useful? Well, I say you are partly right, but you're missing the big picture. Some of the greatest minds in the IT industry, or well, let's hope so, they have put together a lot of work into this. And just by following the guidelines set forth in this enterprise scale landing zone, you will have an amazing starting infrastructure in Azure. An infrastructure that's already scalable and adheres to Microsoft security best practices. Now that's awesome, isn't it? Enough cheap chapping. Let's zoom in to the enterprise scale landing zone. Here you can see the overall picture. It may scare you, much like your mother-in-law coming over for a surprise visit. But much like her, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's here to help. So close your incognito browser, visit the URL in the description of the video, and there you will find the Microsoft enterprise scale landing zone drawing. As you can see here, the top part belongs to the Azure tenant and the bottom part are the nitty gritty details of Azure. Management groups. First off, we will have a look at the management groups. That's where we usually set up policies and role-based access control for the Azure subscriptions. As you can see, there's a whole infrastructure and how to set them up, which allows for unparalleled flexibility. However, in this video, we will more focus on the subscription setup. So let's talk about the subscriptions. This here is how Microsoft recommends that you set up your subscriptions. The most central part, that's the connectivity subscription. Let's draw it out and work our way through it. On the left hand side, we will have the on-premise data center or can be any other data center. It's just not Azure. And over here is our Azure tenant. Remember, an Azure tenant in, is one instance of Azure AD. Inside this tenant, now that's where we place the connectivity subscription. This serves as a shared services hub. The express route VPN terminates here. You can also put an Azure firewall here along with a DNS solution. To this hub, you can then pair the VNets and the other subscriptions. You will then want a management subscription. That's where you, for example, have a central log analytics workspace and all your automation accounts are placed here. So logs from all other subscriptions will be stored and enter this central place. We can then add an identity subscription. That's where you would place any Windows Active Directory domain services servers. The actual infrastructure behind this setup is in what we call different spoke subscriptions. Let's say you want to deploy an application. You then create a separate subscription just for that one application 
and pair it to the connectivity hub. So that means that all the application and everything behind this connectivity hub can use all those shared services that you put in the connectivity hub. So, key takeaway here is Microsoft, they recommend one subscription for each application. Yes, this is not a joke. Large enterprise customers, they have no problems and have hundreds of different subscriptions. There's a fancy word for it. They call it subscription democratization. That is what is used to push this. It just means that the subscription becomes the management boundary for an application, making it easier to manage and assign permissions. In a large enterprise, the core subscription, such as the connectivity, management, identity, they are all managed by different teams. That was a quick overview of the Microsoft Enterprise Scale Landing Zone. So if you find yourself at the party talking to this gorgeous woman or man, whatever you prefer, you can impress them with this knowledge because I'm very sure they've never heard of the Enterprise Scale Landing Zone by Microsoft. So use it to your advantage. As the name implies, the Enterprise Scale Landing Zone, it's very applicable to large enterprise customers. For smaller customers, you might want to consider this, as Microsoft calls it, best practices, meaning it's one set of practices that may be applicable to you, but there might be other possibilities and other ways that will be better if you're a smaller customer. Until next time, I wish you the best and see you. Bye.